Welcome to Interviews, hosted by Randy Goodman, Harvey Callis Real Estate, your real estate professional. Get to know our community, our businesses, products, and services that will elevate your life. Please welcome your hostess, Randy Goodman. Hey everybody, it's Randy Goodman here from Harvey Callis Real Estate, and I am here with the great Sharon Zahavi, branding strategist, an amazing lady, Looking forward to chatting with you. Sharon, thanks for being with me. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you're welcome. I love talking to you, Randy. You're a, you're a great person to be around anytime. So I'm always jumping on that opportunity. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So let's learn a little bit about Sharon. Tell me a little bit about you and what you do. Well, I mean, I'm a branding strategist, as you say. And you added the great. I did not ask you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you'll pay um, me later. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I help uh, small businesses mostly to get uh, a constant amount of uh, leads and exposure that they can really um, create from that, like a real loyal clientele that you know is willing to pay them what they're worth. Um, I used to do a lot of that when I um when I worked for bigger companies, but I switched to working with smaller companies mostly because. That's what people like to do now. They want to work with small businesses, but also because small businesses means that there's a person with a passion and they just don't know how to get themselves out there. And luckily for them, I know how to do that for them. So it actually, it's very exciting for me to be able to do that for people. I love that. And we can see how passionate you are about it. So tell me, Sharon, is this something that you always did? Like when you finished school, what did you think you were going to be or what did you get into? That's a, that's a good question, actually. Um, it's, it's, it was very much organic for me. Um, I used to, I mean, the first job I got was basically in doing some, a little bit of marketing for a small photography studio. Mm -hmm. And I guess I just discovered really quickly that um, I have some kind of a, of, of a skill set that is sort of built in. Uh, on uh, helping people to just sell better, talk better, put themselves out there better and, and kind of dress up their brand in a way that is more organically attractive. So less advertising and more just how to put yourself out there so people come to you. Mm. So once I started recognizing these qualities, um, I, I started working with an advertising agency, kind of doing similar things. And the more campaigns I worked on, I just recognized that it's a quality that is not very common. A lot of people would like to believe they understand branding, but it, but it's it's hard. It's it's not something that is so structured that you can like learn. Um, a lot of it comes from just, I guess, recognizing what people do and like and how they behave, and and that's something that um, I guess I, I just always really enjoy. Just like looking at people, seeing how they react to things, what they're excited about. Um, so that's what made me, made me do this, just basically recognizing how much I can give with this built-in quality. <laughs> I love that. You know, it, it's, it's amazing because you recognized early on that this was something you were good at and something that you enjoyed, obviously, and yeah. you went for it. And a lot of people don't find that or they don't pay attention to it. Yes, they, right? they take it for granted. They think that it's not a special skill. It's like everybody has it, right? right? Yeah. And I felt the same way. I was like, oh, well, of course that's a thing. Like, obviously that's a thing, right? And <laughs> I had to meet so many people telling me, that's not obvious. I don't know. And I'm like, really? Yeah. So it was, it's exciting to kind of find out that, that you probably have a skill that you're very good at and you're just thinking you're just like everybody else, but you're not. You have something special to offer and you know, I you know, I learned that lesson too. And it took actually somebody else in my network to help me recognize that I had skills. You know, like sometimes you'll come out of a divorce or you'll come out of a separation or you'll come out of some kind of event that happened in your life and you're like, Okay, now what? And then you think you think I have no skills and I have nothing to offer and I have no value and you know, you just have all these self-sabotaging thoughts and but you really don't see it right you really don't see 
that there's value there. And it took somebody else to say, are you kidding me? Like you've done this and this and this and this, you've learned all these skills and they're things that sometimes we don't even recognize within ourselves, right? Absolutely. So I think I'll throw a tip out to everybody and just say that if you're one of those people, talk to your friends talk to your friends and let them enlighten you on what your value is and what you can offer because sometimes you can't recognize it yourself (laughs) it's it's so true and i love that advice of talking to your friends because i know everybody's like really into working into mindset and you know believing in themselves and being positive but it's not easy as much as you want to preach it to others like you know believe in yourself it's hard it's something you got to practice all the time because we always want to self-sabotage. Yes. So I, I usually um, dump this responsibility on my friends. I just go to them and I say, hey, I feel like really bad today because I feel like I'm worthless and I'm not doing enough and this is not working, shoot. And then they're like, no, Sharon, you're doing amazing. They're like, okay, continue, continue. I need some of that. Thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you. Because yeah. it's, it's uh, they see it, it's easy for them. And instead of you trying to figure it out on your own, there's like, use your support system. Yeah, exactly. Right. And what and what we're saying is not just to tell your friend that they're amazing, but to actually give them exact yes. things that they do. Like, what are the specific things that they're good at and that you love about them and why you reach out to them so that they know, wow, you know, you're right. I experienced this and I learned all this and it has value, right? So yeah definitely anyway we're going off topic but that's okay uh because we want to talk about sharing but you know love sharing that kind of stuff so and and little things that we talk about will bring up other things and hopefully help whoever's listening so thank you um so Sharon, you, um, so your journey, I know you always kind of felt compelled to marketing and you love marketing, but what was your journey to actually going from, uh, you know, you worked with a photography firm, um, but now you have your own business. What, tell us like the summary version of what <laughs> took you from one thing to the next. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I guess I started in this like photography side of things and then the funny thing is when uh, I was really young, my goal was just to g- save up as much money as possible so um, I can move. I can move from Israel. I can move to Canada. And um, so I didn't care. I was like jumping from one job to another. And without noticing, I built up so much experience because every opportunity that came my way, I was like, yes, I'll do advertising too. Yes, I'll do this campaign. Yes, I'll work with this company. Yes, 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 yes. And um when I was ready to move, which was actually <laughs> not a decision made by me, but uh, my house was bombed in Israel. Oh. Oh. I know. And I was like, you know what? What a great opportunity where I have so much less to pack now to move. Um, oh, so but I hope everybody I, was okay. Yeah, actually, luckily, nobody was, was home, which is, which is amazing, to be honest. Amazing. Right. Uh, but yeah, even me, I was, I was actually sleeping at my friend's house that, like wow. in a different city that night. Um, so it was pretty crazy, but, um, I just decided I'm like, okay, let's, let's take it, let me take it overseas. And, um, and I, I just had all this experience of working with so many companies in Israel and in Europe, because a lot of, I mean, you know, there's quite an interaction in, in that area. We work a lot together. Um, and I lived in Denmark for a bit. So all this stuff, like, um, I just moved here and I decided to just kind of build from it. And I think I recognize the need more than anything. Right. Again, it's kind of like you come here and you're like, I'll get a job. And then you're like, like, no, actually, like I can help other people instead of getting a job and trying to make another big company become bigger and make more money. I can help a smaller company with usually great values, great intention of making the world better. Mm -hmm. Um, I can actually help these people do so much better. Right. And it's so rewarding to see results. Like, you know, I, I bring someone in, I work with her for maybe like a month and from like making like, you know, a thousand dollars a month, she makes $40,000 a month. Wow. And she to help like, like the people that actually need her. So, you know, when she comes to me and she's like, Sharon, that's amazing. I can't believe this is happening. Or thank you for convincing me. 
I feel, I mean, super selfish, but like, I'm excited. Like I'm happy. Right. Like, I'm like, I'm so glad I got to do that. Yeah. So yeah. it's, um, so th that's why I decided to turn it into a, a, a business, but like, I, I can't, I, like, I don't regret it. Like, it's amazing. It's, it's really great to help so many people. And, and I love that. But how do you, so tell us a little bit about how you help people. So that people like branding is like this broad term that people just kind of, yeah. like, okay, what the heck is that? Does that mean I have to be Coca-Cola? Does that mean I have to be McDonald's? Like, what does it mean? Like, what do you actually do for people so that they right. really understand what is it that Sharon does? It's an amazing question because that that's an issue that comes up all the time. Mm -hmm. The problem why reason, the reason why people don't really understand branding is because it's a term that's being used now in many different ways, sometimes to mean marketing, sometimes to mean advertising, sometimes to just mean graphics. And mm -hmm. nobody really knows what, like we're not speaking the same language sometimes and there's so much overlap. Um, so I would say this, when it comes to branding strategy, it's not really just about the way you look, but it's really any strategy that you need to put in place to get people to come to you, to recognize you as a different identity, mm -hmm. as, as something that they can feel something for before they even start working with you. Right. So my main goal is basically put in strategies that do not involve advertising. So anything you can do, to organically attract the right people your way. Okay. And that's a key thing because a lot of people say, I'll get you leads or like, you know, do this email campaign. You get so many people like you responding or do cold messaging. Mm -hmm. These are some tactics that you can use to get people to maybe answer you, but it's just like throwing pasta on the wall, right? It's just like whatever sticks. Right. When you actually use branding first and you have a strategy, it means that it's more, uh, quality over quantity. You you might you might like hear from three people, but three people are going to become your clients mm -hmm. versus sending out a thousand emails and waiting for some responses, and maybe three of them will become your clients. And nobody opening your email either. <laughs> and mostly for small businesses, that means time. That's yeah. so much time putting on marketing, and that's that's painful because as a small business. And I see it all the time. Uh, a lot of people spend like 80% of the time on marketing. And so they're left with so little time to actually do what they're good at. Right, right. Yeah. And that's, that's painful. That's hard, you know? Well, listen, in business, always, 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 like, it's so funny because I'm just backtracking a little. Like, when we went to school, we were taught to work on your weaknesses, Work on your weaknesses because you need to be better so that you get your A's, so that you get good marks. So, you know, work on your weaknesses, work on your weaknesses. And that's fine. But then you come to the real world and there's a whole different lesson. A whole different yeah. lesson is like focus on your strengths, you know, use your strengths. And then what you're not good at, hire somebody else to do it. Exactly. And that's amazing. <laughs> Which is how the total opposite to of what that. we learned. <laughs> It's, it's so amazing. It's so true because, because the thing is this, think about it, right? Like the most, like the richest people out there are the people who don't do the work themselves, mm -hmm. right? They're true. just very good at saying, this is what I'd like to happen. Now you go and make that happen. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and we have a tendency to just do that. Like, you know what? I'm just going to learn it. I'm going to figure it out on my own. And I'm going to learn this too. And I'm going to be so good at it. <laughs> sure. But would you want to? I mean, you clearly have a whole set of skills that you're already great at. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to suddenly be great at marketing? Like you're not, you're not going to get right. to do what, you're, what you love if you're just going to do marketing all the time. No, you're going to spend all your time learning how to do it well. And you're not going to be doing your own business, which is the one you want to be building. Because you're not yeah. out there learning to market so that you can uh, sell those services to other people. Right. You're just doing it for yourself, which means you're taking time away from the business that you're trying to build. And, yeah. you know, it, it, and it's so amazing because it's so ingrained in our heads to be better, to be better, to work on my weaknesses, to, you know, and, and granted mindset and all that wonder, you know, your heart and your insides and all that wonderful stuff. 
yes, work on yourself and be a better you. But when it comes to your business, focus on what you're good at and then contract out, hire out, whatever, you know, get employees, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. In, you know, you do it to hire people that can do the jobs. And it's funny because I was talking to a client the other day and the client says to me, he was telling me a little bit about his business. And he said, Randy, I just do this and this and this. You know, I realized long ago that I'm not going to grow my business doing everything myself. The only way you're going to grow your business and, and make money is by letting other people do the work, right? Mm -hmm. That's not to say that you shouldn't be doing any work, right? <laughs> but what it's saying is if you, you don't rely on people and trust people and hire out to other people, you're not going to grow your business, right? Yeah, you're not gonna... absolutely. You're still stuck in the same place because there's so far you can grow by doing everything yourself. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, and, I, and I'm sure you see it all the time, the problem is people get some results from it. So they go, oh, I'm in the right direction. I'm getting some results. Not recognizing they're putting like 80% of their effort into getting like 20% instead of putting 20% effort and getting 80% results. Yeah. And there's so much time in the day. You can't do everything. And right. what the biggest thing I see with so many people that I work with is that they keep like buying these into like programs of education and they go, I'm learning, I'm building, I'm building, I'm learning, I'm educating. And it's like, great. Now hold on for a sec and just start implementing some of this stuff, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Like start recognizing that enough with the learning and let's actually do stuff. Yes. Because most of the time it's not like, I think people think that it takes like five years to build a business when the truth is to build a small business, you can get it happen in like two months if you do the right things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once it's lucrative, right? Like once you have clients, once people are coming in and there's a constant flow, it's easier to build up and not stress over it. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to say, oh, I'm just going to go all the way to the top, you know, spend all my money, get it really, really big, and then start bringing clients. Exactly. Exactly. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I love it. So who, like, just so people can imagine right now, who would be the type of person or business that would or that should reach out to you like what's happening with their business right now like give them a little bit of a visual picture where okay. they can imagine and say okay maybe I'm that person and I need to reach out well mostly I would say if they have already experienced what it's like doing some business they have some they have some clients, they have some testimonials of people actually happy with, with the kind of service that they do. Mm -hmm. That's the best, that's a, the most important thing. So if people come to me from ground zero, it's a little harder to build a brand because people want to know results, right? The reason it's easy for me to bring in clients is because I can show them results from other clients and say, mm -hmm. here, they get this amount of leads every single day. Here, they get this amount of clients. They get you know, this amount of money every month it's easier for me to get people to trust me in the beginning like that. If you have zero clients, it's harder. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would say a little bit of experience, a little bit of testimonials, even if it's people that you offered your service to for free, mm -hmm. but they were happy with you. Okay. Then we can start building your brand. The most important thing is your goal, mm -hmm. right? If your goal is to actually build a business and not create a hobby for yourself, right? So not some kind of a side hustle, not really put my, my whole effort into it, then don't come to me. If you're excited about your business, come to me because as you can see me, I'm passionate and I'm going to put all this energy into building your brand. So if you're not bringing that kind of energy, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> so I would say that those are the most important thing when it comes to like industry, it doesn't really matter. Uh, when it comes to how, um, technical you are or how creative you are it doesn't really matter because no matter no matter what part of the way you think you are not great at i have someone to help you with that right so mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter um and i work with all different industries i actually have clients in like 18 different countries uh with over like 50 different types of industries so mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with industry if you know your target market and you know who you're trying to attract we're going to find a way to get people to get these people really pay attention to you.
that's pretty much it. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. So do you have any tips or suggestions? And it can have to do with anything, mindset, uh, business, whatever. Do you have anything you want to share? I have lots of tips. I mean, I feel like we can't cover that in a short interview. I feel like we need like eight to nine hours and I'll give you all my tips. But um, uh, let, me, let me think about the main ones. Um, I would say for, for a small business, uh, if you have the passion and you want people to notice you, my main advice is stop playing it safe. Stop mm -hmm. trying to do what everybody else is doing. First, you don't know that they're getting great results. Right. So why would you want to do exactly the same thing? Second, you do the same thing and you look exactly like them. Nobody notices the difference. Nobody finds a reason why you versus somebody else. Because right. you got to remember something really important. It's never about your service or your product. It's about a personal connection. Mm -hmm. And if they like you, they'll buy from you rather than buy from someone else who has exactly the same service. Right. Or maybe in a cheaper price even. Because it doesn't matter. They want trust. They want care. They want relationship. That's what people really want. And that's branding. Okay? So that's a really good advice. Stop like saying, oh, I'll offer my thing for free or for cheap or uh, I'll give a deal or whatever and I'll start making sales. Nah. It's not how you make sales, okay? Mm -hmm. Just work on building your brand and you'll see that it's going to work a lot better. Another advice that I would really give is stop wasting your time on social media if you don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. because it hurts me to see how many people just post and post and post and hope that it will lead to something and there's no strategy behind it, mm -hmm. okay? Really recognize where your target market spends their time. Are you a business to business kind of business? Because if you are, maybe don't spend so much time on Facebook and go over to LinkedIn. Right. Okay. If you're trying to connect with personal people and just build a brand, sure. Let's use Facebook and Instagram, but let's be smart about it mm -hmm. because nobody wants to spend hours on social media and get four likes from your mom, your neighbor, and your husband. <laughs> right. So... So just keep it in mind. It's not about doing everything that people tell you, but it's how you do it so you can spend an hour a day on your marketing and see results as if you had a marketing team. Right, right. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And and that's, that's really important advice, guys. And if you want, like, actually, if anybody wants to hear more about it, they can just talk to me because I can explain even better in detail, specific to the business, what I'm talking about. That's why I was saying talk to Sharon. Yeah. <laughs> so Sharon, I also know you like to give back to society and uh, help others. Can you tell us a little bit about that too? Well, I mean, I don't like to sort of like, oh, how amazing I give back. But um, I am involved in a lot of uh, charity organizations. And as much as I can, I, uh, I, I try to get involved with either um, advice or connections or sometimes volunteer some work as well um i mean you know we did we were planning the gala that was supposed yeah. to happen and yes hopefully it's happening in the fall um, <laughs> hopefully. who knows the world might be shutting down for another year um, but yes every time somebody is is asking me for to support in any way um it's really important for me to give back because I guess because I came from a place where nothing was stable, nothing was, you know, taken for granted. And um, I think it's important when you give back, you really, you really give meaning to what you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I feel like if we all did more of that uh, and stop being so protective, and feeling like people are like, oh, I can't, I can't offer what I do for free. You're not offering it for free. You are generous so other people can grow around you. You'd be amazed, but the more you give, the more you get back. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing. And don't expect for it to happen right away because that's, that's not being generous. That's just right. being petty. Yeah. Um, but, but yes, there are a lot of organizations I work with. Actually, um, right before the, the virus all hit in Toronto, like a week before I, I was, uh, I was a part of a gala that happened here to help support a, a local community theater. And even though I was not feeling well, I was actually quite sick at the time. Uh, we put on a show and we, uh, we made sure that we'd still get some fundraising going because it's important to me. If you commit to something, yeah. um, you do it. 
Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I could list a bunch of things, but I, I try to be very involved. Uh, I mean, my involvement in, in Europe, there's an organization called Crossing Borders um, that's trying to connect with youth around the world to help kind of bridge between a lot of yeah world issues and frictions. Right. And I, I've been involved with that since like, I think I was like 14 or, or 15. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and um, I, I try to do whatever I can every time they need my help. I was actually going to do uh, a lecture there again before before the virus took us all and said, you can't go anywhere now. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for being a giver and for, you know, recognizing that people do need help and that there's a gift that you can give to help them. So thank you for that. Yeah. So how can people contact you, Sharon? How can they get a hold of you? Uh, well, they can always stalk me on Facebook or LinkedIn with my name, Sharon Zahavi. I mean, it's, I think that's a bit of fastest way to get my attention. Um, there's my website, sexupyourbrand.com. Uh, you can always go there, check out a little bit of what, what I do. And then if you want to contact, there's a contact form. Um, but honestly, I'm not hard to reach. It's just that you'd have to convince me that you are as passionate as I am. And then I'll, I'll, be, I'll probably be on your case more than you'd expect. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> well, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing with me today. It was a great conversation. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. So it's uh, great to talk to you. So I'm glad. My pleasure. Have an awesome day. <laughs> thank you. You too. Thank you for listening to this interview hosted by Randy Goodman. We hope you will take action and connect with the incredible business people and leaders in our community. And remember, Randy is always here to answer any questions you have regarding your real estate needs. Be sure to register on the website and stay up to date on what's happening in your area at parkbench.com slash millpond.